Yeah, yeah. I know. I would say you metal. How you could hit tables. Oh, I purposely threw it in the egg. Yeah. Electric's in the air. Welcome to Game Day Battle, where Cleveland Sports News meets biased and outspoken opinion. I have a full game day crew and a couple of, well, a good thing to talk about and uh, maybe uh, maybe some pain with the Browns. Mm. But I think we're going to get into some Indians as well, right? Yep. Got big to, big uh, Indians news. Kicking off the uh, baseball offseason. All right. With a with a bang or a fizz. We'll decide. We'll decide, absolutely. And uh, we're going to have Brown, uh, Brett touch on the, uh, the monsters for a little bit. Yeah. And I... Uh, I think we should hop it right into it with the uh, OSU win. But before we do, DST, Ramon Torres, Brett Finnegan, I'm Mike Glass, and let's go with the uh, Buckeyes. OH! I O! Oh, oh no, yeah. And we're back. Do it, throw it up there. <laughs> yeah! It was good. It was not allowed to hold up, hold up that O. I'm holding up the O for, oh my god, I was wrong. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I have one question. Who, who says now that guy can't throw? I mean, come on. I never said Braxton Miller couldn't throw. I know. Anybody? I said, wait, hold on, hold on. Before, like, before, like, are you on the wagon yet? Like nine yeah. Hey, are you on the wagon yet? <laughs> no, not Braxton Miller. Hey. Well, and just, just yeah, to set the are. scene, it was, it, was a, it was a great win for the, great for the win Buckeyes over Wisconsin. And, of course, it took some last-minute heroics, but it, it took a lot of fight, too. They, they were up. The uh, then it, the game was close, and they came back, and it was it was it was a lot of, a lot of struggling, but it was also a, a sign of a team that really believed in what they could do, and perhaps even a coach that can can handle things in the crunch. And uh, I know we've we've kind of beat Fickle up quite a bit, and we talked about how he's pretty much done anyway at the end of the year. But we see a few more games like this; it's possible he can be around a little bit longer. So I doubt it. Yeah, uh, you, you don't <laughs> think so? No. I don't. I think you know he's here for the time being. Basically, we're just using the pieces we have for now, and uh, if we come out with a winning season uh, this year, good. And um, he'll he'll definitely hold a, a a position within the organization, but not a head coaching position. Maybe assistant head coach, and maybe he'll be brought up along the ropes. So maybe when that next guy leave, maybe Urban Meyer, then he'll be able to come up. But I don't think he's ready for that yet. So you think we we went out and we win. In, in good fashion, where we show you know a team that, that that can really power through and deal with adversity and and come back and and make things happen and that we have that kind of the rest of the season and then you fire the guy. Or this organization was under or in shambles. All media was all over it, and the guy stepped up. Hey, he took the position. He was or he was offered a position. He stepped up and took it and. And from there, I'm pretty sure there was a clause in there. Like, look, man, you know yeah. you're not going to be the whole uh, head coach forever, you yeah. know. Well, well Dale, do you think that, like, if, if he were to, to, to win out and, and, and to really show that he can run this team, he, you're right, Ramon, that he did receive this job sort of on a temporary status. But if he, if he received the job and then proves himself, doesn't that sort of give him the right to at least – a look, a good look for uh, as coach for the next year. I don't know. Ask Eric, ask Eric Mangini that question. He <laughs> probably won't like his answer. But right. just to touch on what Ramon was saying, um, was that there were big shoes to fill. Somebody they had to put somebody in there, you know. And a high-profile coach probably wasn't going to put his reputation on the line to step in and put the weight of an unknown future on his shoulders of not knowing what players were going to stay or go or if they could even put the pieces back together. So they kind of just put this guy in there to deal with it for the time being and let things cool down and then see what they have when they go forward from there before they go after like a big name coach like an Urban Meyer or something like that. So, so I mean, you, you, in your view, both of your views, it's a foregone conclusion. He's done at the end of the year regardless of what happens. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's tough. I think so. Urban Meyer just bought a big house outside of uh, Columbus. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's. So, hey, he just, it's already done. Paperwork's filed, and he just bought a big crib out there. It's a good so. tip to know right there. Yeah, that's that's pretty important. Brett, in your opinion, maybe not what they're going to do, but what would you like to see happen? Would you like to see this guy get a second chance if, if he proves himself? No, not really. I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> Munch up on their bandwagon. I think on, they they, they, they they nailed it right there. It, it, he is. He's he's a way out. Is what it is. He's gonna, you know. Hey, if we come out, you know, seven and three, you know, whatever, you know, winning season. Hey, you know, you do have potential to be a head coach. But I don't think the athletic director and you know, the University of Ohio State or Ohio State University is gonna deal with that. It, they were were too high class of a a football program. They want somebody. They want somebody in there that's a like a lead team. They want to be back in that top five, you know, you know, BCS rankings. They want to be 
back at number one and all that. So you'll see some changes at the end of this year. I mean, especially with the head coaching. I do, I do believe that. Okay, no matter what, it is a college. I mean, it is in the NFL as well, but it's especially tough in college because you know they they fostered relationships. Those two years, those two years recruiting it was Trestle though. I mean, it's just right in, in the Trestle yeah. system. So, then, mm -hmm. so whoever it is, or Meyer, whoever is going to come into a, a system that's already been set up for years ahead of time to be the guys, the system that will work in the system that he wants them to work in. It's kind of tough to to now just get the whole thing. Not and, really. You come to college. You have a new head coach, you know, it's not going to be the same system as you learned in high school. You're going to come to college, you know, two years down the road, or, you know, even if you're going to come wherever Myers there, it's going to be a new program anyway, so you might as well put that new head coach in there and let them run the new head offense, new defense. And that, that's that's something you, you're touching on that's real big, too, because we're going to bring in this big-name coach, Urban Meyer, to bring national titles home. With Finkel, we're not going to get that. He doesn't have that national title experience. He doesn't have that big game experience, well, that 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 Big Ten championship beating down the Wolverines that we we look for every he year. He does. He, 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 he wasn't does because he was a part of it. You know, so was the the, the water boy. He was a part of it. He wasn't the guy. H2O. That's H2O. He wasn't the guy who put the plan together. And Urban Meyer. Is that guy who has that plan to win national title? No, here, here's I'll, 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 I'll give you that point. I mean, it it, it, it was you know the, the Buckeyes as they are is Trestle's baby, and it wasn't Pickles' yeah, baby. Exactly. But if my point though that I was saying though, if we finish with three losses, if he can continue something like that, and then of course we get better next year, it, it those three losses become one loss, and See, suddenly we're in the same place we were before. I don't think there, college is the next year. You got to be good, and you. You gotta be a winning organization. But if they're winning now, yeah. why would you get rid of the guy? That's what I'm saying. Who are you gonna rather play for? Would you rather play for, you know, Hoagie in Michigan or Fickle in Ohio State? You know, it's all about the relationship with the head coach. If Fickle hasn't doesn't have that big of a you know reputation or that kind of a resume, would you wanna to go to Ohio State and play? Or would you rather go to Michigan where they have a winning school or Michigan State or you know, Penn State, you know, they have Joe Pa. I mean, would you rather, you know, Trestle was still here, you'd be like, well, yeah, well, let's go to Trestle, you know. And, but now we have Fickle. Is that kind of ringing bell? Is like, yeah, I want to go to Ohio State and play, you know, under Coach Fickle, you know. He's yeah, not, but, he's not. Well, yeah, I understand. He hasn't really made a name. And I know a lot of it, it's not even the player, but it's the it's the dad. It's the dad that's like, I want my boy to play for yeah, Trestle. I want my boy to play for Urban yeah. Meyer, whoever. And there's nobody out there saying, I want my boy to play for Fickle. I understand that, and he hasn't created that or around him of the guy. But I'm saying if there's potential there to do that, and you can keep Trestle's system sort of in place, maybe there's benefit to that. Because if you go to Urban Meyer, you go to somebody else. Are you guys willing to have a five or six loss season next year I as part of the be. restructuring and part it of the rebuilding? Be. That's this year. This this, this is the year for five or six y'all. Right. But they didn't. <laughs> we yeah. fucking won. So what's up, man? We're some Buckeye love. I love it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Sorry I had to go with Wisconsin, BM. man. But on paper, dude, it was. It looked like it was going to be a Badger W, man. They really. Uh, we just ran over that Badger. What a, second, w. what a second half that was, man. Uh, I will Thanks. say this that um, that morning I woke up and I was like, why the hell did I take Ohio State today? I, uh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was like, man, that was dumb. Yeah. But, um, man, I. Yeah, just. just Seeing the way that team played, I mean, did, was there any? I, I didn't feel let down about any of it. I mean, there were times, but it's college football. There's always times where you, in the game I felt down because it felt like the the defense let up in the second half to allow a, these guys to come back. That's a tough offense. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. I understand, but but the way we dominated in the first half, uh, it was like, yeah, this offense ain't, ain't tough. What are we talking about? Who's yeah. who's this guy who's yeah. named Heisman Trophy candidate? We shut him down. Yeah, I was worried about our offense in the first half though. They didn't look too sharp. Yeah. yeah. Running game was there. Love the the, uh, the double headed snake we got going on with uh, Braxton Miller and uh, Boom um, with Boom, Boom Heron Boom. going off. Man, I love that. They had no answer for Braxton Miller. They did not have an answer for him. I will tell you what, he ran all over those guys. Big Ten freshman of the week. Yeah, Braxton I'm, Miller got the nod on that. How about Hall running that back? Right, yeah. right. Got us to the fifty, man. Mm -hmm. We needed that. 
Yeah, yeah that was huge, and you know that was that yeah. was that's what you like to see from a from a team with a lot of yeah. fight is things need to happen, and everybody does their little bit to to get them to get them there. Yeah, this yeah. is really a, like Braxton Miller's coming out party. I think yeah. I feel like he's officially arrived on the scene right now. Would have been would have been nice maybe if uh, Wisconsin hadn't lost last week. They would have been probably ranked eighth or so. Would have been nice. Uh, the win probably would have would have meant more to us. Uh, we probably would have had us back in the top 25, but. Um, you know, big big things. Uh, Braxton Miller playing mistake-free football. You know, he didn't do it all through the air. Just seven of twelve, only 89 yards, but one touchdown. The game winner on the end when he was on a run. It was a 44-yard launch, and uh, no picks. That's, no picks. That's fantastic. It was one yard shy of a hundred of a hundred-yard game. Hey, Brett, are you are you comfortable with the way they they're running this offense now? I mean, it's so run heavy. It still was run heavy, even with uh, you know a couple of nice nice throws. Are you are you good with this now? I mean, are you still yeah, wanting to see? I mean, Boom Heron's been missing for five games. You might as well just give him the rock every time. And then we saw he ran for 160 yards. Yep. I mean, that's and the longest 57 yards. I mean, that was a nice. I mean, that been, was a nice CFP touchdown, but yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, I mean, I mean, you're not. You don't have a very, you know, uh, adequate passer yet. I mean, he. I think every game. I mean, I'm. I know I'm not on the bus yet, but I'm slowly getting there. And I see. I see Braxton there growing up a little bit each game. You know, and uh, he grew up, you know, a big step in this past game against, you know, a big team in the Big Ten in Wisconsin. I'm good. You sure? All right. All right, well, the Browns have uh, let us down a little bit again. <laughs> Thank you. And, um... <laughs> That was me crying. Is that it? Yes. Thank you, Dale. You don't know why um, I even wore this. You know, I don't know if it was a letdown. I didn't think they were going to win. Dale, you didn't think they were going to win. Um, two other people here did. I did. But um, it, it, it was a tough game against a good team, and they lost. And they it's lost. a good in, team. In, <laughs> in bad. What do you mean they're not a good team? They won like five straight. Five and straight in the NFL they're a good is a team. serious team. Their defense is for real. Yeah. Our defense is for real. Okay, it is. But theirs is more for real. Well, let me just say... Just, just, just to kick things off, it, it wasn't pretty. We all know that, so we don't need to belabor that fact. But let's, let's think more about specific things that we'd like to see from this team that we're just not seeing. Okay, let, let me put one on there that I think is going to be, the survey will say, is number one. We had zero red zone appearances the entire game. You're not going to win the game if you can't put the ball in the red zone. Is that how it works? Yeah. Well, what if you just throw 45-yard touchdown passes to uh, Cribs? Well, you'll have to have time. you'll have to have a quarterback who can actually do that. And while he did do it, one freak garbage touchdown in the fourth <laughs> quarter. Okay, cool. Josh Cribs earning his paycheck because he sure as hell ain't doing it on special teams. Not that it's his fault. The NFL kind of took special teams out of the game. Right. But Josh Cribs is a very overpaid Cleveland Brown right now for what he contributes on the field. I'm sorry. But he's the only one scoring touchdowns because. Uh, Big G Little can't even get in the end zone. Uh, his routes don't uh, run him that way. Well, you know, well, you can attack Greg Little, or you can. It's all about timing. If they're, if, if the, it all starts with the offensive line. If they're not blocking, Cole McCoy's not going to have time. Mm -hmm. the, the wide receivers don't have time to run routes to get open. When you have three seconds to throw the ball, you can go like this. You can go yeah. out and turn around. Or you can go left real quick, or you can go right real quick, and that's that's going to be your options right there. I want to send a big shout out to that garbage player we call. Tony Pashos, who doesn't give a guy not even three seconds to throw that damn ball. <laughs> it's it's kid not blaming one guy. It's the whole offensive line. He's sign up, man. It's one. It's the whole offensive line. When we're well, missing Eric Steinbach. Big I mean, time, please, yes, yes. Eric Steinbach, I mean, get you healthy. You can't it's blame everything. I mean, you can't put everything on Steinbach. It's that whole side over there, and he's not yeah. the only side. It's his side. It's I mean, yeah, side. but he's not the only player on that side. You yeah, know? So the other no side is Joe Thomas, who's supposed hey, to be wait, uh, right. So wait, wait you, you want to blame one player on that side, then it's like, oh, he's just not the only player on that side. Okay, so you got to these two, these two guys over here got to pick up his load. I mean, the guy's taking a two steps back, and next you know we're fumbling them all.